Hi there. This is Mike Campbell with Beerloons.com coming at you again, doing another beginner brewers series video for you. Uh, today's topic is on basically the bottling bucket and the bottle filler and how to use these items. If you're not familiar with this series, I'm running a complete set of pages on my blog that allows people to learn what each individual item is when you go to buy an equipment kit on how to make beer. Basically the beginning equipment kit and maybe some pieces that you need or don't need depending on what type of brewing or beer that you're trying to make. But this is just a short little video to go through the next stage for folks so they can kind of see how some of this equipment works in action. So we've got our bottling bucket up here and the beer's already made. We're ready to go into our bottle and we're not worrying about bottles in this presentation but as far as it goes we're just going to use a 22 ounce uh, bomber bottle here. And what you do is the beer is fermented. You've now transferred it into your bottling bucket and the bottling bucket is the one that you can attach the spigot to. It is not the one that's solid. And I point this out and I pointed out in a previous video as well only use this bucket as your bottling bucket. There's issues with using the bucket, this one, as your primary fermenter because you got a plastic spigot here. It can harbor bacteria, which is my main concern. Uh, there's always talk about oxygen being able to absorb into the beer and cause oxidation. That's certainly a possibility, but my biggest concern is bacteria in this plastic spigot uh, because plastic can scratch pretty easily. So, we got our beer in here. If you haven't already, you want to add your priming sugar. Priming sugar gets added to the bottling bucket. So, uh, in our case, priming sugar is usually made of corn sugar in America, and we typically use about five ounces or roughly three quarters of a cup. There's various amounts. If you want to look it up online, that's up to you. Uh, but this is the most common. You certainly could use any sugar source for all that matters. Uh, this is dry malt extract, so you could certainly use this as well or you could use honey. Some folks will use honey to uh, prime their bottles with. You could use regular table sugar. There's gonna be various amounts, different amounts. That's listed on our blog as well uh, under a post that says, um, I don't have priming sugar, now what? So keep that in mind if you're wondering what else you can prime with. Maple syrup is another one that some folks use. Now, the bucket's probably the most common that you'll see. Uh, may have different colors, but that's about the only difference. Bottle fillers can differ a little bit. This is a spring-loaded one. On the bottom, I prefer the spring-loaded bottle fillers because they tend to seal a little bit better when you're not using them. Um, there's half-inch equipment. Mine happens to be 3 8 inch. I don't like the vacuum that forms with the half-inch uh, equipment. Uh, plus, bottling, it goes through very quickly and causes a bit of an issue, uh, but that's just me. Uh, there's automatic bottle filler, one by Ferrari, and uh, there's another company that makes one. I've used them both. They work really well, so if you want to use something different than the real basic bottle filler here, uh, the automatic bottle fillers work very well, and they're, they're manual systems. Of course, you can buy uh, pumps that are automatic bottle fillers, ones that plug in that are electronic, or electric, sorry, not electronic, but electric, and those bottle fillers work well as well. Uh, but they're a few hundred dollars, and for the home brewer, uh, probably not a priority for most of us, but it certainly could be up to you if you're trying to do a little bit more volume. So, here is my big hint, and this is why I did this video in the first place. We get the priming sugar in here. We're all ready to go. If you're using uh, fruit extract, put that in at this point as well. I don't like doing it any other point other than just prior to bottling, because it's the closest that the beer is going to taste in bottle to at this point. So you can do it by um, kind of your taste. So add a little bit of the fruit extract at a time. And once it gets to the sweetness level that you're looking for, you're good to go on. Uh, but what I was going to point out here was my big hint is when you get your equipment kit, you usually get about a four foot piece of three eighths inch tubing uh, or maybe five sixteenths inch now. And what you want to do is out of that four foot section, take about six inches or so and cut it off. And you're going to put one end onto the bottle filler like I have here, and the other end of that tubing 
will hook up to your spigot here. This took me years for some reason to figure out and didn't occur to me. There weren't um, the advances in technology like YouTube today like there were when I started. So uh, most of what I figured out, I figured out on my own. This was one of those things. Bring the tube, or bring the bottle, sorry, to your bottling bucket. Why is it so important? Because you need to sanitize these. Now, in this particular case, it would take about 32, 36 of these. Uh, man, sorry, not that high, about 28 to 32 of these bottles. So now we've sanitized them, we've got them all ready to go. They're sitting on my counter, they're sitting on the ground, they're sitting wherever you got room for them. And you have this four foot piece of tube that you're moving all over the place, and you're going to catch one, and then it's dominoes from there. And now you're starting basically all over, or maybe you're breaking a bottle or two. That's why I feel it's uh, nice to do it this method. Little hint makes life a lot easier. We've got everything sanitized, we've got everything ready to go. Uh, it's not a bad idea to put a towel below uh, your bottling filler because it does like to drip a little bit regardless of which one you use. And you simply open up your spigot. Now, at this point, really nothing's going to happen because we've got the bottling bottle filler on here. Nothing happens until the bottom of this pushes up against whatever you're filling, whether it be a bottle, a growler, or whatever. What you want to do, bring your bottle up to it, push, and sometimes you have issues with the spigot. Hold on for me. There we go. And there we go. Sometimes you got to play with it a little bit. And you just fill it, and you're going to fill it all the way to the uh, top of the bottle. Literally all the way to the top. Um, and you'll, I'll explain why in a second here as we get this filled. So, sugar's in here, beer's ready to go, alcohol's made, it's clear. Want it to uh, be ready to, it's go, not going to look any better once you go into the bottle unless you want a whole bunch of sediment. So, make sure your beer is clear first, or cleared out. And you're going to fill all the way up. Go all the way up the neck of the bottle, all the way to the very top, and then pull the bottle out. So what this does is it leaves the perfect amount of space. So we have a gap of about like this, perfect amount of space in the bottle to allow for carbonation. If you fill all the way to the top and don't have that space, uh, the carbonation is going to take either a very long time if it happens at all. There's nowhere for the pressure really to build. Same thing actually happens in kegs as well doesn't matter what type of bottle you're using, you want to always leave that little bit of gap in there. And that's the nice thing with the bottle fillers is when you pull them out, it displaces enough liquid so that you get that nice air space, this, or, air space or air gap. So you've got 12 ounce bottles, 32 ounce bottles. I don't care if you use the easy cap style, which are the ones that are the flip style or some people know them as Grohl style bottles. All those will work just fine for this. Same method, growlers, they all work the same way. So by the time you uh, remove this bottle filler, you're good to go. Um, that's really about it. That's all we're talking about because we've done a segment on capping and we're uh, doing more segments as we go along here. So I appreciate you watching and do want to point out, uh, don't forget to check out our blog because there's all sorts of great information. And we did move it uh, from a previous hosting location to it is now blog beerloons.com and we also have our brew for you weekly beer education and review show that you should check out as well every week we do a podcast don't need an iPod for that I'm sure you know that because you're on YouTube but um, you don't need anything special you can just go to our website beerloons.com go to our podcast page and each week every Wednesday evening we post a new episode uh, we review two beers each week we talk about a beginning brewer's tip, uh, we talk about beer terms, and our big thing is we talk about uh, the style of beer that we're reviewing. We spend a lot of time uh, really letting you know what goes into each style of beer, what ingredients, what hops, what grain, what malt, uh, what yeast is used. And then we review the beers as well, and a new segment that we've added for 2011 is the beer and food pairing. We've done a pairing in the past, but now we're doing actual recipes designed for the particular beer that we are pairing with the food. Uh, so we're really excited about that. We think it's going to be very, very cool, and we think a lot of people are really going to enjoy it. 
It's just not some random pairing that we're coming up with here and there. Uh, we're going to have the actual recipe for food paired with a beer. That's going to be on the Brew For You podcast show, but we'll also post the recipe on our blog as well. So certainly appreciate you taking the time with me today uh, to listen to me talk a little bit about bottle filling and bottle fillers. And again, don't forget, it is beerlooms.com. My name is Mike Campbell. You have a great day. Off to the screen.